Hello, everybody. Welcome to the January 2, 2020, 2020 jam session for Songwriting Pro. Happy New Year. Glad you all can make it. All right. So for the next hour, we're going to talk a little bit about what I want to talk about. And then it's like Open Line Friday. We're going to open it up to your questions and whatever you want to talk about. Uh, it, so it's going to be your show. Y'all are going to be driving and I'm just going to try and provide value. So of course, this will live in the Songwriting Pro members area as they do every month. So if you, if something here is helpful, feel free to watch any of the others because hopefully there's something helpful there too. All right, what I want to talk about tonight is is a four letter word, and it starts with D, and it's debt. Uh, how debt is a dream killer. So, um, which is sexy songwriting stuff, I know, but hey, I'll, I'll try to take a holistic approach to this. I want to help you all be successful, and a lot more goes into being successful than just uh, rhyming you know, and that sort of thing and making relationships. It's also setting the environment that's going to allow you to have the best chance to flourish as a songwriter and to hang in there for the long term. So I'm talking a little bit about debt. I'm not going to throw any numbers at you really, but I just want to put this on your radar and hopefully encourage um, y'all. So, and hopefully my internet, which it says is unstable, will stay good. All right. Um, so I think debt is, is a dream killer. And I think it's a big dream killer. I think if you want to make the jump, to seriously pursuing songwriting writing as a career, or if you're already a pro, then I highly encourage you to avoid debt like the plague. Um, if you're already saddled with debt, I encourage you to pay it off as fast as you can. Uh, but I just wanna share four ways that debt uh, kills songwriting dreams, all right? Four ways that this can be an antagonist and can, this can stand in the way of, of where you wanna be. So the first thing is debt makes the jump more difficult. So the higher your, your bare minimum income is like, you know, whatever that, you know, the, the nut, the thing that, you know, the, the floor of what you need to make or your family needs to make in order to just keep the lights on and that kind of stuff, the higher that bare minimum income is, the less likely it is that you can take that 12 to 18,000 a year publishing deal. If you can get one, <laughs> you know, some people take publishing deals for less. So the higher that floor is the less chance that you can, you can quit that job or whatever it is to take that twelve to eighteen thousand a year publishing deal, um, even if your spouse will, or that your spouse will even let you take that. Right? If you're married, if you have that, you know, where it's not just a you, but there's someone else in the equation. Um, so some people, you know, I know some folks who are able to chase songwriting full time because they have a spouse that has a full time job, and so it's not all on them. Um, you know, so they can they and their family can kind of live off their spouse's income. So they can be the kind of secondary, whatever they, they pick up can be the secondary income. But the more debt your family has, the less likely it is that, um, you know, that you can be that lucky spouse that can just live off that one income. So number two is debt limits how much you can invest in your dream. Um, so, you know, $700 in car payments, 150 in student loans, 2000 a month in credit cards, whatever it is, this can keep you from, that's money you could be spending on a demo or on coaching or on your trip to Nashville or New York or LA or wherever, you know, your music center is. So how fast can you save up money for that move to that town to New York, LA, Nashville, or Atlanta or wherever your place is, if you have to pay those type of bills on top of it, you know, that, wow, I have a nicer car. I'm driving around my demo money. You know, I had, you know, I had a really good dinner the other night and put on the credit card. I ate my demo, you know, and that's something to think about. Wow, I ate part of that plane ticket to Nashville. That was a really nice bottle of wine, but that was a seat on a plane ticket that could have got me to Nashville. So uh, also debt brings stress. I mean, it's financial stress steals your energy and focus. And uh, okay, I can raise my hand. I've been there. I felt the stress that puts on a family. Um, and that kind of stress also steals your creativity. You know, when you do have some time to to write, it's still some of that creativity. How much can you focus on achieving your goals if you're not sure how to juggle your juggle your bills and you're spending your creativity going, if I move this from this account to this account, I don't do this, you know, and you're spending all that creativity trying to figure out how to cover your, you know, your bills, it doesn't leave a whole lot of like, I'm gonna go write a song now and just leave that outside the room and and be my crazy, creative, wonderful self. That's really hard to do. Um, beyond that, you know. I mean, divorce, it's, you know, financial stress is the number one reason given for, you know, divorce and debt is a major cause of financial stress. So beyond what's good for your songwriting and your songwriting career, it's just good for your family. 
to keep that overhead low. So I'm a big believer in keeping the overhead low. Um, and the fourth thing is debt makes it harder to survive the songwriting valleys. Um, this kind of goes back to your bare minimum income. The more debt you have, the more minimum income you have to have to, to service that debt and your monthly living expenses. So, you know, say if you're blessed to get a staff writing deal, then the odds are fairly good. You're going to get dropped at some point. No offense. I've been dropped myself, but odds are fairly good starting, you know, staff deals don't usually end in, millions of dollars they usually end up looking for another staff deal a lot of times you know there's no shame in that it happens to a lot of people um but you know the the more bills you have every month the higher that minimum you know income is then the less you know time you'll maybe have to look for that other publishing deal before you have to go get another day job or the less you'll be able to survive on that publishing deal before something hits and you get some cuts and some income going above, you know, that, that deal. Um, or just the more that, you know, Hey, you have a, you have a pub deal, but now I gotta go get a, you know, start waiting tables or driving Uber or whatever it is besides that. And that's taking time directly out of what you could be doing songwriting. Um, so I think a big part of going pro and staying pro is giving yourself all the time you can in which to achieve success. A lot of it is, it is a marathon. A lot of it has to do with staying in the race, staying in the game. And it's about putting yourself in a position so you can ride out the peaks and the valleys. Peaks are pretty easy to ride out. It's those valleys you got to watch out for. Um, and I think debt limits you in those areas. It's like carrying around extra, extra weight and you're trying to make this climb, you know? So I'll, hopefully you'll do yourself your family and your dream a favor and you'll kill the dream killer before it kills your dream. So basically what I'm saying is say no to the 98 inch, you know, holographic flat screen and say yes to your dreams. So that's what I wanted to kind of start off and give you a little food for thought and all that good stuff, which is very comfortable to talk about money. I'm not Dave Ramsey, but I've listened to him a time or two. So, all right. Uh, that's what I had to talk about. So we have like 50 minutes left for y'all and what you want to talk about. There are a couple of ways you can ask questions. You can, uh, most of y'all can.